Pharma Ventures, experts in deals and alliances. Welcome to Pharma Ventures Insights at Biotech and Money in London 2017. For decades and decades, biotech and pharma companies have been working to create a disease-modifying treatment for Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's, CNS in general. Now, there's a German company that's working to create one by using an, a unique mechanism of action, by removing toxic polygamous from the brain of Alzheimer's patients. Today on the show I have with me Dieter Wilhold, the chair of the supervisory board of Creobold. Welcome, Dieter. Thank you. A very unique mechanism of action for CNS therapeutics, um, removing toxic polygamous from the brains of patients. It's, can you expand a little bit on that for us? A better oligomers are thought to be decisive for development and progression of Alzheimer's disease and therefore we figured out that it might be a good idea to simply eliminate them in the body, in the brain and the mechanism of action uh, that we were going for was to stabilize a better monomers in an aggregation incompetent conformation in order to shift the equilibrium between monomers and oligomers away from oligomers thereby eliminating them, destroying them directly, which is very different, for example, to antibodies that are also used for targeting a better oligomers, but for example, an antibody just binds the oligomer. It does not do anything to this oligomer. Instead, it has to wait for the immune system or components of the immune system to come and uh, eat them away. It's very impressive for a company that was founded earlier this year to be almost at clinic, almost entering phase one, because especially because CNS drug development is very complicated, takes a long time. Was this technology pre-existing before the company was formed? Uh, we have uh, developed a lead compound many years ago already with exactly that mechanism of action. And we could show proof of concept in animal studies for the lead compound. But this took us very long time in the academic surroundings um, and so therefore in 2013 we started a lead optimization, lead optimization strategy in order to find a more efficient compound uh, with new IP, worldwide IP and uh, so here we are and want to bring this compound towards the market. And I understand that your technology has potential applications in CNS yes. diseases in general, yes. not just Alzheimer's. Exactly. So what made you decide to go with Alzheimer's to start off with? For our strategy to identify a lead compound, um, you need to have your target compound synthetic. And uh, that limits at the moment the target proteins to those ones that can be synthetically prepared. And therefore, among all those potential target proteins, a beta is one of the very smallest and easily accessible for a synthetic uh, chemistry. So it made sense to go with Alzheimer's. Yeah. And you have plans to expand into other disease areas. Actually. Exactly, because the mechanism of action can be easily transferred to any other protein misfolding disease. Not only CNS, there are also other misfolding diseases. And for your clinical trial, what would the endpoint look like and also what sort of placebo are you looking at? Because one of the biggest problems with CNS trials is placebo effect and, and measuring the cognitive improvement of the patients. So what's your plan with that? Well, of course we will work with a placebo and uh, importantly the placebo has to be such that it cannot be uh, identified as a placebo. We took care of this. Um, the clinical endpoint in the best case is of course deceleration of cognitive decline. Um, this I think is the most important thing also the patients would like to see. So therefore at the moment we would go for this clinical endpoint deceleration of cognitive decline. Um, there are several ways to measure this in humans. Um, there are many more people that know much more about this than me. What we did so far was to show this proof of concept in animals, in transgenic animal uh, models, 
and there we have been successful in three different animal models in three different laboratories by the way so it's not just working in our laboratory it's working in three different animal uh, in three different laboratories and one way to measure memory or cognition in the mice for example is the Morris water maze but there are also other um, experiments around to do this and there we could show that mice that were orally treated with our compound were able to learn during a five days training period whereas the placebo treated mice did not. We know that, I mean, depending on the number of patients and the scope of the trial, like phase one CNS trial costs anywhere between five to fifteen million dollars. Um, how have you been funding yourselves and do you have enough money to take it to the end of the trial? Yes, we have a funding until the end of phase one trial by the Helmholtz Validation Fund, which is then matched a little bit more than one to one by the Forschungszentrum Jülich, which is uh, like a national lab. Uh, as you have in the US. So the, the research surrounding there is uh, able to provide us with capabilities, scientific capabilities and uh, the funding to carry out the IND enabling studies and the phase one study. And your strategy, I guess, for a CNS therapeutic to go to market, it'll take a lot of money, a lot of, a lot of patience, a lot of time, no. um, a lot of resources basically. What's your strategic plan in terms of do you want to partner with our companies? Well, we are standing now just before the phase one and we are already planning the phase two to show the proof of concept in humans. So we have already numbers, rough numbers that of money that we will need to carry out such a phase two study and that's why I'm here. We are looking for uh, venture capital in the range of 25 to 30 million euros that should allow us to carry out a proof of concept study in humans. So you'd like to get some private money or private funding, take it to phase two, and then from then on when the value cre when the value is a bit higher, maybe partner with pharma companies. Exactly. A good therapeutic, some may say, is only as good as how well you diagnose the disease. So you're working on a companion diagnostic? Exactly. I think that's very important if, you, if we want to eliminate pre-existing oligomers in the human body, in the patient, then we must need to be able to measure and quantitate a better oligomers in, for example, body liquids like CSF or even blood. And therefore, many years ago already, we started to develop an assay which is able uh, to quantitate a better oligomers in body liquids. And for this, one has to overcome two technical um, hurdles. Um, one is there are always a better monomers around in all of us, all the time. And this we do not want to measure. A better oligomers will be around in our body liquids only at very, very low concentrations. And they will be chemically identical to the monomers. And therefore, we invested quite some time and effort to develop a method which overcomes both technical problems so we are now able to quantitate a better oligomers in body liquids at the single particle sensitivity level and a better monomers are not influencing the readout at all. So we have an absolutely specific and most sensitive assay developed. And actually this assay is the basis of another spin-off company which is called Atiloid. Atiloid already suggests to you that we are in the atomolar sensitivity range, which is for volumes you take in blood at the single particle level. And with this potential companion diagnostic, we want to we want to use this technology to recruit the right patients and to monitor therapy success. Great. Well, Dieter, it's great to know that there is a company using a unique mechanism of action for developing a therapy for Alzheimer's disease and other CNS diseases. Thank you so much for your time today and all the best with all your development. Thank you so much. For more information about Pharma Ventures, visit our website.